Terry, this is a, sounds like a scary story. Walk me through what all happened. So we were at the Ivy, my favorite restaurant, the place actually that Heather and I met, okay, and where we have all of our wedding anniversaries. And we're there with my son, and we were talking about renovating the new Beverly Hill project. And my son's telling me, hey, we changed the locks, and it's got a code, and I wanted to say, what is the new code, right? Rather than a key, it was a pad. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. And so Heather freaks out. And I thought it was because I was sort of half a gimlet in and I was eating the, cr the crispy white bread with a, like a tostada chip. And I go, hold on. And she flips out. And it's a very public place. And I looked at her, I said, what? What's wrong with you? And she stands up and she looks at Nikki and says, call 911. I said, do not call 911. And within, I don't know, a minute, it was already over. And so I, we got into an argument. I said, you're embarrassing me. Stop this. It had already resolved. And she goes, nope, call 911. And in seconds, the ambulance comes by. I, said, I can't believe you've done this. So out of respect to the paramedics, I walk out to the street where we're still arguing about the fact that she did this to me in public when it was just this temporary thing. My perception was not what she had observed. I got into the paramedic vehicle respectfully and I said, guys, measure my blood pressure, my O2 sat and so on and so forth. I go, look at me. I go, do I look like I'm having a stroke? And they go, no. And they go, but your wife wants us to take you to Cedars. I go, I am not going to Cedars, which is right. You can see Cedars from the Ivy, as you know. Right. And so I said, I'm not going to Cedars. And my wife's knocking on the door, go to Cedars. And I refuse. And I got really upset that she was embarrassing me from a restaurant we go to every week, maybe. So I, in the paramedic thing, being belligerent idiot, I called Uber. And the Uber pulls up, I get in the Uber, and I go, go, and we take off. Heather, being persistent and insistent and correct, and in, you know, the life-saving mode, called an Uber and said, follow that Uber. And my plan was to, I was so mad at her, I actually texted her, I'm never going to forgive you for this. And so I, you know, feel like crying about it right now, but... Anyway, so she calls all my doctor friends, who I very much respect. One of the head of general surgery, UCLA, and they all call me. They said, what's going on? I go, do I sound like I'm having a TIA or a stroke? They go, no. I said, you know me. You know I know this stuff. I'm an expert. I'm board certified, plastic surgery, general surgery. And they said, Terry, if you're not going to do it for you, do it for your family. Just go to the hospital for your family. So the problem is, Bryce, if you're having a stroke, I don't know if you know this, you have five hours to get to the hospital to get what's called thrombolytic therapy, therapy to dissolve the clot before permanent brain damage occurs. Wow. They finally convinced me. I said to the Uber driver, I redirect him, take me to Hogue Hospital, my hospital where I am on staff. I walked in, these doctors were so good to me. They brought me right in. They drew my labs, they examined me, they got an MRI and sure enough, I had a TIA. But what was unusual was, it wasn't just sort of a hypertension, plaque related, age related stroke. They did a bedside echocardiogram which showed I had what Emily Clark had, Aubrey Plaza, Haley Bieber, I had a PFO, a patent foramen ovale, which is an opening between the right and left side of the heart that 20 to 30% of people have. Now, huh. most people don't get a clot passing over. I had recent bunch of travel that Heather made me go on as a break on vacation. And as it turns out, we get little clots all day long when we travel, okay? But they go into the major big vessels of your lungs and they dissolve no big deal. And 
you know, if it weren't for my wife's insistence, you know, I mean, let's face it, most doctors' wives would go, hey, you're a doctor, I'm gonna listen to you. I would have gone home. I would have gone bed to bed. I may have died in my sleep. I may have had a terrible stroke. But at the end of the day, even if that didn't happen in the next 24 hours, the chance it would happen in the next several months is 20% chance I would have had a stroke and died. Heather Dubrow saved my life. They, I mean, that is not an exaggeration. That is just hashtag fact. <laughs> and she will probably never let you live that down. <laughs> I, by the way, I apologize to her profusely and to give her credit, okay, as opposed to some of the other arguments we have where we have to repeat and hash and rehash for two weeks. She goes, not your fault, and she let it go. Well, I would imagine a lot of people would be in the same place you were where, oh, maybe I've had a little too much to drink. Maybe I'm just tired and try to write it off. So the advice here is just get it checked out, even if you think you're fine. Here's the thing. The number one cause of mortality in this country and in most countries is cardiovascular disease. The most devastating component of cardiovascular disease is not actually a heart attack. It's a stroke. It's the most fatal. It's the most reversible, but the moment it occurs, the clock is ticking. And you need to get, if you, someone has numbness, tingling, inability to speak, horrible headache, or any of those kinds of stroke-like symptoms, obviously paralysis. Mine lasted 55 seconds, or I couldn't speak. It's called dysarthria. So anybody else would have said, eh, Terry's had a little too much to drink, all right? But I'd only had half a cocktail. I mean, thank God I'm married to Heather Dubrow, really. Is there anything preemptive people can do who, I'm sure when they hear this, they will be hypochondriacs who go, oh God, I'm gonna have this. So is there anything people can do to get peace of mind? I am so glad you asked me that because the answer is yes. There is no question all of us form little blood clots when we travel, particularly when we've been on a plane for more than one, two, or three hours. So if you've had recent travel, get up every hour in the cabin and walk around, go to an internet retail website and buy some compression socks if you're going to travel, and obviously, and wear them while you're on the plane. And as soon as you get off that plane, go for a walk, get your body moving and this last piece of advice you need to talk to your doctor about but i think almost everybody who's going to get on a plane for a long flight should consider taking an aspirin right before